It is uh, Kevin Kenny. We're on the world famous K Rock. We're getting piped out to the LA Forum Club. Make some noise for Jack Antonoff. Hey! Hey! <laughs> I know you're is this on the guy, radio? But, yeah, this is on the radio. On the radio? Yeah. We, uh, no cursing. Yeah, what's your favorite uh, curse word? Yeah, fuck. Ah, there yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Straight, would you beep it out? You can tell he's from Jersey. If you say fuck, do you beep it out? Well, now he's saying it again. Now he's saying it again, okay. Why don't and this you say is, it one more time? on K-Rock right say now. Say it one more time. I'm really fucking thrilled to be here. Yeah! I'm Woo! Really, um, well, you, I, know what's, you know what's funny is that uh, you're from New Jersey, I'm from New Jersey, and uh, we'll get into how... Uh, my, ro- my dentist lives in his... Or I go to the dentist in, the, <laughs> in his town. Yeah. This is gonna... This is we gonna, just figured that out before <laughs> the interview. <laughs> Orange County is our hot zip, and they're gonna love this. But um, Rolling Stone actually called your, uh, your new album that's due out in March. Guys, Bleachers has a new album out in March. <laughs> Let's fucking go! Um, and Sorry. they called it Distinctly New Jersey. What is Distinctly New Jersey about? I mean, obviously a writer wrote that, but do you feel that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is Distinctly New Jersey about the record? The duality of wanting to leave somewhere and stay somewhere all at once. That's You're here, right? You left. Don't you miss it? Yeah, a little bit. But yeah. it was like a necessary leaving. I can't go. I can't leave. I have a pull back to it. Well, I think there's a, if I may say, right, from what I've read about the uh, new album that is due out, I think, uh, March 8th, maybe, is the yeah, release date, yeah. um, on Dirty Hit, if anybody from Dirty Hit's in the house. Um, what I've heard is that, uh, you know, you have this sort of a conundrum on the album that you explore of tribute living, right, where you're living life for maybe, like, uh, somebody that is not here anymore or a time yeah. that's not here anymore. And then also, you know, on the new uh, single with Lana on Alma Mater, you have this line about killing your idols. Is that sort of a connection of sorts in terms of the same thought process of sort of detaching from the past? Yeah, the, the, the whole album is all about finding a way to move on. Yeah. Um, is I just think, it, I don't know why, but I felt compelled to write about that. I, I never know why. Yeah. Uh, the things but, I write. It, but it led to you feeling very present, I understand, as a songwriter and as an artist. Yes, it made me, it made me feel uh, more conversational in the music than I have in a long time. You uh, you were saying to the Guardian out in the UK that uh, when writing this record, you know, you were also wrestling with this idea of sort of uh, not wanting to let go of maybe toxic aspects of your life or problematic aspects because you you would uh, you feared that it would hurt the art form, and you know now you're a married man, of course, and yeah, those are calmer waters typically than a young single guy with a lot of piss and vinegar, um, but they're more interesting. Yeah, you know, no one gets to like be like 80 and they're just like, oh, you know, I just go out with a different person every night and it's fucking great you know I mean there's so much to discover uh, whether it's my personal relationship my relationship with the band the records I make about long term relationships more and more opens up if you can if you can believe in it yeah um Probably a cliche at this point, but you know, some people might, a layman, a new listener might listen to your music, hear some Bruce Springsteen uh, influence, of course, and how can you not being an artist uh, from the state of New Jersey? Yeah, my biggest influence. Um, you know, he's fantastic. He's playing the form next year. Quick plug hey. for, for uh, the boss right there. Um, and I, uh, John Stewart said a great thing when he inducted Bruce into the, uh, the Kennedy Center for his honors. And he said, when you're listening to Bruce Springsteen's music, uh, you're not a loser anymore. You're simply a loser in a Bruce Springsteen song, which is, you know, there's That's a. That's gr- true. Right? Yeah. And so I was curious. Imagine, imagine that theory and growing up in the same place exactly it's like compounded i can attest to it my, myself for sure as a music lover do you ever think about sort of the listening experience that you would love for a bleachers fan to have when listening to this new record yeah and it's constantly in a car why I, that because i i saw i grew up listening to the music that i cared the most about it was in a car um the the something about your body going that fast feels uh like many things are possible. Yeah. And like you can uh, escape things you want to escape. You said something actually in an interview you did in Florida last week that really struck me. You know, there's an old adage uh, in performing of just picture the audience naked and you uh, somehow that's supposed to take off the nerves. You actually don't like to picture the audience at all. You perform without glasses and so they're actually blurry and I think there's actually a genius to this. Can you explain the approach? Oh, I just like it because I feel like I can feel um, what's happening more intensely. Right. Um, I've always liked that. I've always liked that. Uh, I, I started taking my glasses off because they would fly off when I would play, but then I just realized I just like reacting more to the feeling of things than the exact look on everyone's face. Yeah. And then you, as uh, such a uh, multi accomplished person in the world of music, of course, everybody knows you're uh, Someone pr- dropped a drink. Where? Uh oh, right there. Oh, they dropped the drink? Yeah. Make some noise for the drop drink! <laughs> <laughs> I like my favorite thing. 
if I'm ever on the radio, is to talk about things that you have to see. Oh, isn't it great? Yeah. Well, Somebody you're you're kind of like an like a low key troll, and I say that I say that as uh, somebody who appreciates. Well, I don't know. I guess let's say, let's call it a high key troll. I'm a, I'm a fucking huge troll. Well, you love calling places. You love prank phone calling places. It's like, like dead people. I like prank well, I, dead people's assistants. Yeah. Um, it's just years on tour. It's like when you're on tour, all of the different versions of humor just get broken down to the most debased layer, which is just like trolling. Nothing's better than a prank phone call, though. It's all we have. Since sense of humor goes. It's all we have is a humanity left is prank phone calls. What I was going to ask you about is how you keep such a level head because, uh, you know, you're an artist, you're also a producer, and, you know, you said in the Guardian piece that, you know, you don't let the chatter keep you up at night, but then you have people, like, before an album even comes out, debating what an unreleased song is about. And so how do you do that when you work with really high-profile people? You yourself is, are a high-profile artist. How do you sort of, uh, like, sort of navigate that? You put the phone down. Oh, so you, is that as simple as that? Yeah. Okay, is that what you all have to do, I guess? Well, yeah, I mean, right? It, it, the world's a pretty nice place. You just put the phone down. Definitely. It's really, um, I think Issa Rae had this, I, I'll probably, it wasn't, I won't get it right, I'll paraphrase, but she was basically like, social media is like the most low stakes horror movie because you just put the phone down. Yeah. So and I think about that a lot. And they kill the monster. Anytime I, like, I'm like feeling lost in it, I'm, I leave the house. That is well said. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, you balance a lot in your life. Uh, we're talking tonight about mental health with a lot of our guests. How do you, I mean, obviously putting the phone down, but expanding upon that, how do you sort of, you know, maintain your mental health amidst the career that you have? Well, this is like a mental health crisis right here. Well, this we're is, in like a cage. <laughs> this is the Describe it. Lights. Describe it for the listeners. Yeah, there's, there's like bright lights on our faces. Um, there's, we're, there's like a cage. Uh, it's like a petting. It's a, it's a crazy, this is a very surreal environment. Right. Um, so that... I take care of myself by uh, um, uh, <laughs> avoiding situations like this. <laughs> no, this is fun, but it's surreal. I'm not doing too much of it. Right. Real answer, like you know, having like a regular life, I'm just spending time at home. Everything in moderation, even moderation. Yeah. What are you looking is, at, Jack? The lights. T tell the folks at home listening to K Rock, what are you seeing right now? Right now, I see a cameraman who seems ready for my next fuck. And I don't believe that we're on air. No, we are. I don't believe it. We are. Oh, I thought I thought you meant something different. You I don't believe that we're, we're not on air. Are we on air? We're not. I fucking wow. knew it. Wow. Yeah. Theater of the mind, Carlos. Jesus. Anyways, what anything the fuck else happened? So this, I don't is, know. this isn't gonna air at all. It's on YouTube though. So I can curse. It's as already much as I demonetized. Want. Demonetize the fuck out of this video right now. Demonetize it, Jack. You fuckers gaslit me. I don't care. All right. Well, uh, thank you so much for stopping by, Jack. We're, Most, I, we're, we're from five miles from each other. 201, baby. 201, Burton County. 201 number. Hell yeah. That's my man right there. Guys, more Chaith. New Bleachers album. <laughs>